and welcome to Anton's TV. My name is Jack. I'm here with the lovely Ben. Nice, Ben. Good to see you. Thanks so much. Ben's here because I know nothing about modular synthesis and you've been great. The few times we've hung out taught me a lot. What are we showing off today? The incredible Strymon Magneto. Cool. So we're going to dive right into it and for that we need to spin around but I'd like a high five before we do. Let's do it. What is it? So they call it a D-tape sort of emulation, echo and looper, yep. D-tape being digital tape. Obviously there's no, no plastic running around inside this thing. Um, it can do your standard, standard tape delay stuff, but it can also be a looper or a sound on sound sampler. Um, be easiest if we just jump right into some noises, I think. Yeah, oh, great, let's do it, let's hear it. So what we've got going in is just <laughs> pluck from 2HP, which is this little string sound. Now the way the magneto works is a little bit different to your typical delay. We've got these four playheads here, which are all going to be at different distances from each other, but they give you different uh, timings basically. So on this little switch down here, we've got even, triplet and shift. Lovely. To see what the triplet does. So on each of the modes, we've got four different rhythms that we can choose the volume of here. The little green lights down here, the little buttons, if you switch them on to green, then the repeat knob will work. That's just going to be your feedback. So you can crank it all the way up. Uh, oh, nice. But it doesn't run away and distort too much, which is nice. Yeah, that's good because it's a bit unwieldy sometimes. Isn't yeah, it? sometimes it, it can just turn into one big Mars bar of audio if you're looking <laughs> nice, at the waveform. Yeah. So if we bring that back up. Cool. See this little LED running away there? That's going to be your sort of level into the tape. Nice. So you can see that's just a little bit level. And as it goes orange, a bit of saturation on the delay tails. We also have a spring reverb sound built in. If we get rid of the dry sound. We've got wow and flutter. Lovely little pitch warbles going. Got crinkle. Crinkle and einhorn. Yeah, einhorn and crinkle. Fun little sound there. We've got tape age, which will roll off some of the high end. And a low cut as well. One of the other weird but kind of cool ways that the Magneto works is you've got two controls for your tempo. So I had a little clock going in there. Let's get rid of that. What we can do is if we swap over to keyboard mode, so Jack can play some glorious, glorious riffs for us. <laughs> no pressure. Dodgy pentatons. So we can get those cables out of the way. Perfect. Cool. Monophonic, unfortunately. Oh, no worries. The notes can overlap, but you can't play chords. Such is the limitation of Eurorack. Like I was saying, with the two ways of getting your tempo, you can do a tap tempo. So if we go for a, a faster one. Really fast. Oh, right. tap function, that's going to be 
moving the position of your virtual playhead, so these chaps here. But you can also control the speed of the, uh, the virtual tape. So as you move it down, obviously you can get your fun pitch artifacts. Nice. But that's slowed down your virtual tape, so you can hear it's got this really cool lo-fi kind of vibe. I'm getting a lot of image, like the stereo image on it mm. is really beautiful. Yeah, it's fantastic. We can actually look at that now. So there's the pan section over here. You've cool. got three options. You've got left, right, right, left, left, right, left, right, or center, which actually doesn't always have to be center. Paradiddles. <laughs> yeah. So in left, right, left, right mode, it'll go left, right, left, right, and ah, so on. Ah, right, I get you. On the four heads, because mm. it sounds amazing. So we'll listen Almost to those quickly. Then left, right, right, left. But the great thing about the center position is you can have it mono if you like. It depends actually how I might have left it from when I was playing with it before. But you can hold down one of these green buttons underneath each of the, uh, the playhead yeah. controls and you can manually set your own pan. What? So if you wanted, uh, you could have it... That sounds so good. It sounds like knobs. <laughs> yeah, I love that guy. Is it a guy? Who knows? Brilliant. So there's lots of customization there. I really like it with the speed quite far down because it's got so much character that to those mm. tails. I love it. Cool. Love it. Let's go back to something a little bit more normal. Yarp. So while we're still in the echo mode, let's have a quick gander at the uh, little transport button down here and the little legend underneath the green, uh, the green buttons. Mm -hmm. When you press the transport button, it goes red and you can access the little bits that are written down there. So let's play in some stuff into sort of the delays. Now what I've done there, I timed that quite well. It's a oh, little, little ping pong yeah. thing. So on the left, we've got little loops, so the infinity icon. That will just hold the delays that are currently going forever, basically. Uh -huh. And we've also got a reverse button. So I've just got to look at the Maltese Falcon. <laughs> this... Carry on, man. So then you can pause it as well if it's not in um, the infinite mode, which I'm really liking this, I'm going to save it. But you can pause that and restart from the beginning of those tails. So when you press that pause button, it literally slows down the tape to a stop. But you can choose how long that, that lasts. So while, the, uh, while it's paused, all the way to the right, it will resume instantly. All the way to the left, Which is fantastic. Somewhere in the middle is kind of fun. Cool, so while that's playing, we can still. Oh, wow. Um, but it won't add anything new to the tail, so it's kind of cool. You can. A looper? Um, yeah, there's actually um, a better version of the, the looper that you can um, use with this, this control here. We'll get to that in a second. Sorry. You're, you're just rushing ahead here. <laughs> yeah. you doing? So you can kind of jam over it, but then also add in your spring reverb. Oh, love it. A little bit of the flutter and the crinkle. and Woo! Lovely stuff. C'est magnifique. Cool. What have I missed? Have I missed anything? I think you've gone through... How have you, you're a modular dude, I, mm. I know the D-tape algorithm mm. from a bit of guitar, I've got the El Capistan. Yeah. And uh, um, and I had a, I met the dude, um, the lovely Strymon, God, I should know his name, he was lovely anyway, yeah. at, at NAMM, and I saw this, um, and it seems like they've been very thoughtful about it, the change from the guitar market to the modular thing. As a modular mm. guru, and as my <laughs> m uh, modular sensei, 
how, just honest, what's your honest opinion on it? Uh, and how does it sit against maybe other modules that I don't know about? Because mm. I know Anderson's we're getting into it. Come. It's got a completely different UI and uh, sort of functionality to any other modules. There aren't any, as far as I know, that will go this far into replicating the actual tape sound. We know that Strymon have a great reputation in the guitar world, and keyboardists are picking mm -hmm. it up as well. They've just got fantastic studio quality sound. You can use their pedals as outboard. Um, but this has that same sound available. You heard from those really lo-fi tails with the speed all the way down. They sound incredible. And we didn't quite and this jump is your rig. It. This is your stuff. Some, uh, some of these of it, are. Yeah. So the Magneto belongs to Strymon. I was uh, very fortunate to borrow that one. Um, and then these two are mine. Uh, these are mine. Um, this is another Anderton's thing. But a lot of this stuff we're going to start stocking soon. And yeah, because that's what I'm interested in. Because I it makes fabulous music, by the way. And uh, it's too kind oh, so to you, me. You've got a channel, <laughs> your own one. Robert Rhodes music. That's me. Robert Rhodes. I love it. It sounds. I'm really trying to get into it. So thanks again. And you've been a great help. Um, has, has this turned you on? Like, let's, let's go honest opinion, or do, do you feel that...? I would need more time with it to actually sort of make some tracks, but the great thing is um, I know there's some manufacturers that have jumped into the modular world and they haven't quite done what the modular people want. What we want is patch points everywhere. We want to be able to control it um, with CVs. We want to be surprised by these modules. So here... Did you, you get can... that with this? Definitely. Good. That's so what we want. You've got the transport controls. You can fire gates at those. If you've got a sequence playing, which I'll actually pop back to a sequence that we've got. Yeah. Just so we can show you. Uh, that's my pitch. This sounds great, by the way, this pluck thing. It's brilliant. Oh. I love it. <gasps> So when you've got a sequence playing like that, it could be made from sample and hold, it could be random voltages um, generating your sequence. But if you've got more uh, random events, random voltages, you can plug them into the speed, um, the mix, um, all these things. So you'll never get the same combination of voltages firing into Magneto all at once. So it will constantly be turning up fresh wow. sounds. Um, and the great thing is you can abuse it. like. You can really drive into the um, yeah. Into that the, in the saturation that you were getting there yeah. was all very musical. There you go, some of the drive again there. And does that, as a modular performer, is that a, a nice aspect that it, it can kind of sound extreme, but it doesn't go too far? Like you said, there the range of the way it slides it because it seems quite precarious to me as a guy. Yeah, definitely. Um, Look, yeah. So I've got a, a dual VCA here. That makes has some great distortion, but it's not that subtle character that's actually quite difficult to find in a lot of um, Eurorack stuff because there's a lot of digital modules around, um, and if you distort those, it can sound pretty awful. Um, but they've done a fantastic job of sort of emulating the uh, sort of the analog, the tape yeah. thing. Um, and having the CV control is just fantastic. And you, you said, because um, we went through all those bits, set lovely demonstrations of it, but the, uh, the modes here, the echo mm. loop sample. Uh, There's some really cool stuff in there. Let's delve in. So we've got the three modes. Red will be sa sample, green is echo, loop mm -hmm. is orange. So if we jump into loop, what we can do, actually, this will be a good opportunity to have you play some bits again. Oh, terribly sorry. I apologize in advance. If we grab our pitch and gate controls. This is a cool bit of kit, isn't it? Yeah, KB37 by Waldorf. Um, if you actually want to make a modular instrument that you can physically play instead of sequence and push buttons like I like mm. doing, um, it's really good. Yeah, lovely. So, the loop function is a sound on sound looper. So, what we can do is we can play stuff in. You've got the tap button here, which was your tap tempo previously. It'll still do tempo for the first three playheads, but it'll turn this fourth one into your record head. So to get this to work, you're going to have to have the feedback on and the level up. But so if you want to just start playing some bits and pieces. So that, uh, 
I'm playing that. It's, am I? Are we going into this loop now? Yeah. So what it does is it records in and sort of the older bits sort of fade away, so you can build up these textures. Oh, okay. My own Gamelan orchestra. <laughs> yeah, you jam with yourself. It's really good <laughs> for those lonely among you like me, sad times. No, I'm with you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but we must never hang out. We will treasure our loneliness. <laughs> so cool. in the same way as you could using the transport controls on um, the echo mode. That's what I'm of, talking about. You can grab the last bit and... Just yeah. keep jamming over it. It's a very ethereal, a beautiful sounding bit of kit. Definitely. Um, the Spring Reverb, obviously Spring <sighs> Reverb has a, a great history with synthesizers and organs and things, so it's kind of that. It does go well, doesn't it? Like, yeah. Nat naturally, I, I thought it might, it might not be a good fit. Uh, but you're saying yeah, it's it's not my it's favorite not type of reverb personally, but it does have that really distinctive, unnatural character. That sort of can we hear thing. it by any chance without the delay and just kind of hear? Yeah, of course. Yeah, thank you, mate. So we should turn all the playheads down. So this is without, and then we'll go half mast. It's good. It's not too metallic. Can get there if you push it a little bit. Yeah, but it's still got that little the thing where you can hear the spring. That's really nice. You can hear it kind of sloshing around. It's great. I mean, this pluck thing is blowing my mind. Yeah, right? and it's the smallest module in this entire oh, thing. It's great. Love it. So if we hop to the sample mode, let's do it. That'll be they call it the phrase sampler. So what you could do is um, use the tap button, which of course you can CV control down here. Oh, that's cool. So you could have another module kind of give it the tempo. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. So to get this working, you need to have the have some clock going in, ideally. And then I've just got this extra clock output just going in here, which is going to be triggering the loop. Now, where did that come from? So we can get rid of it by tapping here. Let's go back from back from nothing. So your tap button kind of becomes your record in and out in both of these modes. Yeah. So I'll play something terrible. Then it's kind of saved in the memory and yeah. you'd have to press the uh, in the transport bit the sort of the play button. Nice. And that's kind of a one shot thing so it'll play your sample once. But because I had some clock going in while I was recording it it's going to be kind of tempo mapped and you've got four clock outputs here that will sort of give you subdivisions of what you sort of feed the module in the first place. So you can just grab that, patch it into itself and it will just keep triggering it and give you a loop. So if you're um, more musically inclined than I, you could possibly uh, get a really good loop going and jam on it. So a proper looper in there. Mm, it's incredible. Once you've got sequences like this and a lot of your modular setup is sort of locked to a single tempo, you can get things a lot neater than if you're just kind of tapping yeah, it's just yourself. Yeah, pitch quantizer. Is that something to do with it? <laughs> this is... I love that. I haven't, I'm like, <laughs> what is this, that? And this is like... one of my... Yeah, it's one of my favourite bits. So if we go back to the echo mode, so just regular delays. Cool. What we can do... If I grab all my, you gotta come in, uh, or listen to this on headphones. Hopefully, because uh, very about? rarely do I have this kind of stereo goodness going on, and I'm feeling it today. Great oh, fun. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I've got the the green buttons lit. So that means the repeats control is doing our feedback for mm -hmm. us.
So you can hear there we had our kind of runaway tone. This is where it gets really fun. What you can do is you can see it says hold for pitch quantize. Mm -hmm. So you hold that button, it goes orange. What that does is you'll be familiar with uh, the kind of pitch artifacts you get when you play around with the speed control on delays. <laughs> exactly, but it quantizes those to musical scales. <laughs> so, what we're going to do now... Go on, stupid. So, put our feedback all the way up. <laughs> I'll put a bum note in there, I'm going to do that again. I thought it was kind of bluesy and I liked it. Instant Daniel Caesar. So what you can do is you can hold the transport button and you see how those lights are kind of flashing. That yeah. denotes what scale it is. I haven't memorized them. So it's moving the, the loop in a harmonic series. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. I love it. Cool. They've so we gone can... so deep. I'm so impressed by Strymon going this far. Mm. Like that is just so not there on the <laughs> on the guitar pedals, but because it sucks to be a guitarist, eh? Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> burn! Cool. So, what a cool bit of kit. So the tap tempo is still going to work if you don't leave a clock plugged in like a goon. Well, it's exciting, my eardrums. Yeah, it was kind of making me feel a bit ill, that one. Yeah. Um, hopefully I haven't killed anyone who's wearing headphones at the moment. Yeah. But the cool thing about that one is we started out with a tape delay, loopery kind of thing. Now we've got a mad oscillator, because what we can do is get rid of the quantize. And where is our pitch at the moment? Hang on, let's get a note. And grab the pitch, that's the gate, hang on. Grab the pitch from the keyboard, plug it in on the speed control. Cool. There we go. Let's see if I can get this to work again. Yeah, it's part of the fun of modular. Yeah, yeah. So that's you playing. That's actually just back to pluck as, as we were before. Lovely. But what we can do to show off my favourite bit of this module, yeah. which is actually not that uh, not that different to a lot of other delays and reverbs and loopers and things, but on the third mode, these two tempos, we didn't actually show the uh, the triplet function off. Let me do that quickly. So if we get this sequence going, lovely cables everywhere. We give Magneto some clock from this sequencer. This is even mode. And that's triplets. And then... Just a little bit of low finess because I do love that. We have... I'm going to introduce this slowly because it's so exciting. Um, the shift mode. So this is going to be pitch shifted delays. So... So our dry signal back. We've got, I believe this is minus an octave. Yes it is.
with the pan, that's crazy. Yeah, if we turn the tempo of the sequence up, there's my clock gone, there it is. My man. Ben, thank you, bro. What was that? <laughs> we'll go like brotherly, like star. Hey, that's been Whoop. the Strymon Magneto. Thanks so much, Ben, for putting me through it. I think we've covered everything. Do you want to have a little jam out? Yeah, why not? That'd be fun. Yeah, I'm going to go and uh, have a subway and some, maybe some <laughs> Hey! <laughs> <laughs>thanks for watching the Andertons YouTube music technology channel if you're a guitar player or you play bass or a drummer or you're into keyboards you might like one of our other YouTube channels and I'll put links to those in the description below anyway if you'd like to find out more about the products we featured in this video please click up here if you'd like to watch another video from this channel please click here if you'd like to buy a t-shirt like the one I'm wearing click down here 
And lastly, if you'd like to subscribe to our Music Tech YouTube channel, please click down here. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.